I'm going to walk through a probability problem related to normal distributions. So we're presented with information here. Uh, it states scores on the SAT are normally distributed with a population mean equaling 500 and a population standard deviation equaling 100. This is the population mean. This is the population standard deviation. And it asks, what proportion of students obtain an SAT score of 350 and greater? So 350 is an X value. So the first thing we want to do always is draw the distribution first so that we can know uh, like where we're looking specifically. So when we have a distribution I'm just going to sketch a normal distribution. Right down the very middle is that mean. So mu, which is um, population mean, is 500. And we don't even need to worry about um, exact standard deviations. We just need to know that a score of 350 is lower than 500. So it's going to be, that score is going to be on the left-hand side of the mean because we're going from small values to the left to higher values on the right. The mean being right in the middle of that normal distribution. So if we're looking at what proportions of students obtain an SAT score of 350 and greater is what we want to do is, um, bear with me, we we want to go ahead and highlight everything from 350 and above, including on this other side of the distribution, the far side of this distribution. So um, to be able to find out the proportion, we should know automatically that our proportion from the mean and the entire this entire half of the distribution because right down the middle if you split the distribution in half that's 50 percent okay and if we report it as proportion that's p equals 0 0.50 so basically is what we need to find is this sliver here so that we can add it to that um, proportion of 0 0.50 but to be able to find this area, we're going to need to find our z-score. So let's um, think about what our, the information is. We have a, a population mean of 500, standard deviation of 100, and an SAT score of 350. What we want to do is calculate that z-score. So at our distribution, Everything to the left of the mean is going to have negative z-scores because that negative means it's below the mean. So in actuality, our z equals negative 1.50 makes sense. So is what we need to do is find the proportion, or the, which is a probability. So right here is 0.4332. P equals. So is what we need to do is add that to 0 0.50, 4, 3, 3, 2, and then once we add those together, that gives us the total amount. That basically tells us this entire half of the distribution, so this half of the distribution, which is 0 0.50, plus this sliver together, which would be P equals 0 0.9332. That would be your final answer, is that amount right there. Now, often the only, the only time you ever need to add um, the two proportions together is when you're crossing over the mean. That's the only time you would need to add. So there's an example. 
of how we came up with a proportion uh, provided a probability using population information. The equation. As you can see, I have it here. But Z equals, our raw score was 350 that we're looking for the Z location. Our population mean was 500 and our standard deviation was 100. Okay, so when we calculate this out, we should be getting negative 1.50 as our z-score. Now that makes sense. If you look back, we have z equals negative 1.50. We need to look at that and look at the unit normal table. So I'm going to show you drawing our unit normal table. And so as you can see, here's the page that you would be looking on. Right here is the z-score column. So these are actually z-scores, okay? So I'm going to draw um, basically right here between the mean and z, if we were looking at between mean and z, I'm going to quickly draw that, between mean and z, oops, so let's say we have our mean, sorry that's so sloppy, right on the middle, and then we have a z-score here, we'd be looking at like a little sliver in the area or it could be on the other side. If we were looking at beyond Z, so this one goes for column B. For column C, we would be looking beyond Z. So, I'll, so right down the middle, and if a Z score is here, it's beyond, like so on the tail end of outside of Z is what you'd be looking at. So we know that we want to look at, um, very specifically, we want to look at column B. So we want to find the z-score of 1.50. Now remember, it's going to show positive in this unit normal table because the unit normal table is a reflection on the right-hand side of the left-hand side. It's just the same. So the positive 1.50 is going to have the equivalent proportions in the same regions as the negative side. So at 1.50, I'm highlighting it, area between mean and z, I'm highlighting this, our proportion is 0.4332. So 0.4332. P equals 0.4332, oops, should be another 3, is literally basically this sliver of an area but on the opposite side. So when we go back